Welcome to our video tutorials for our PC tool OpenSide. In this video, we would like to demonstrate the feature Routing. If you are not yet familiar with the basics of OpenSide, we recommend the video Basic Introduction to OpenSide from this series. In complex systems with several controllers, it is not always possible to connect the OpenSide client PC to a communication interface of the controller, e.g. if the controller is installed in a difficult to access location on a mobile machine. In this case, it would then not be possible to flash the controller while it is installed or to use the displays on the dashboards. With the routing feature, communication from the OpenSide client PC is routed through another controller to the target controller via an easier to access interface. To demonstrate the routing we use two controllers from STW, one ESX3CS and one ESX4CS. Both controllers are connected to a power supply. They offer CAN and Ethernet as communication interfaces. We connect the CAN bus 1 of the ESX3CS to the OpenSide client PC via a peak CAN USB interface. We connect the CAN bus 2 of the ESX3CS with the CAN bus 1 of the ESX4CS GW. For a proper CAN bus, the 120 ohm terminating resistors are connected. The Ethernet connection between the OpenSide client PC and the controllers is realized by a USB to Ethernet adapter. We draw the topology of this system in OpenSide. We start OpenSide and open a new project. So our system consists of an ESX3CS and an ESX4CS GW. We will use Ethernet. We name the bus accordingly. We also use two CAN buses. We will name these accordingly as well. In this example, let's assume that the ESX3CS will be connected to the CAN bus 1 with its first CAN interface. The second CAN interface will be connected to our CAN bus 2. The ESX4CS shall be connected with its CAN interface to CAN bus 2 only. Finally, we connect the Ethernet interfaces of the controllers. We save our project on our PC. We now have to add the data for the controllers. Again, I would like to refer you to the video Basic Introduction to OpenSide, where we go into detail about this work. We assign an IP address that is valid for our network. First, we add a data block for the ESX3CS, which represents the application. In this dialog, we fill only the fields necessary for our tutorial. I have already prepared a suitable application in the form of a hex file in the file system. For the ESX4CS, we also assign an address valid for our network. For this controller, we need three applications because it is a multi-core system with boot core, application core and safety core. I have also prepared these hex files in the file system.
Finally, we save the project. In system commissioning, the default view for our system has already been created by OpenSide. We see that in the standard view, the OpenSide client PC, on which the OpenSide PC tool is running, is connected to the Ethernet bus. We assign a meaningful name and therefore rename the view. In this configuration, of course, the routing feature would not be necessary since both controllers would be accessible to OpenSide via the Ethernet interface. We create a new view for the connection of the OpenSide client PC to the system via the CAN interface. In this view, we connect the PC to the CAN bus 1 and also give this view a meaningful name. Starting from the OpenSide client PC, in this constellation the OpenSide program can only communicate with the ESX 4CS GW controller through the ESX 3CS controller. We now transfer the configuration of the project to our entire system. Since routing is not allowed for device configuration, we select the Ethernet view here. We scan our system for devices. The controllers of the system are found. We assign the found devices to the controllers in our project and execute the device configuration. We can define the routes for the routing system in the system definition. For this we consider again the configuration of the controllers. If we want to reach the ESX 4CS GW through the ESX 3CS via CAN bus 1 and CAN bus 2, the boxes at routing for the ESX 3CS must be checked on both CAN interfaces. This is the case. Routing does not have to be activated for the ESX 4CS GW because in our example no communication protocol has to be forwarded by this controller. However, the box for update on the CAN interface must be checked for the ESX 4CS GW. We remove this now to show the effect. OpenSight shows an error message in the view. In the CAN view, the ESX 4CS GW would not be reachable now because the function update is not allowed. So we allow update via CAN bus 1 for the ESX 4CS GW and get an error free view. The ESX 4CS GW can be reached and updated via the ESX 3CS. We can now flash both controllers. After clicking on Enter Update Mode, OpenSight can determine which application needs to be updated. We see in this example that on the ESX 4CS GW, the application core has to be updated. During flashing, the animation shows that the communication from the direct client PC is routed via the ESX 3CS via CAN bus 1 and reaches the ESX 4CS GW via CAN bus 2. Routing also enables cross interface flashing. To illustrate this, I disconnect the ESX 4CS GW from the Ethernet in our experimental setup. We also accomplish this in the system definition in OpenSide. We remove the connection of the ESX 4CS GW to the Ethernet. The route should now lead from the OpenSide client PC via the Ethernet, the ESX 3CS and the CAN bus 2 to the ESX 4CS GW. For this, routing must be allowed at the ESX 3CS for the Ethernet and CAN bus 2 interface. 
for the Canvas 1 interface it would not be necessary. For the ESX 4C SGW, only update on the CAN1 interface must be allowed as before. This remains as it is currently set. The CAN view now shows an error because we did not allow routing on the CAN bus 1 interface, but in the Ethernet view we can now reach the ESX 4C SGW. After clicking on Enter Update mode, we see that it would actually not be necessary to update the controllers. Therefore we now force the update of the ESX 4C SGW and start the process. The communication path is animated again and we see that now from the client PC over the Ethernet and the ESX 3CS and the ESX 4CS GW is reached and flashed. Routing from CAN over Ethernet is not supported though. To illustrate this, I reconnect the ESX 4CS GW to Ethernet and disconnect the ESX 3CS from CAN bus 2 instead. We check the routing configuration. We allow routing on the ESX 3CS via CAN bus 1 and the Ethernet. The settings of the ESX 4C SGW remain unchanged. In system commissioning, OpenSide returns the message that routing from CAN via Ethernet is not possible, although the route from the client PC via CAN bus 1 and Ethernet is theoretically conceivable. The feature routing can not only be used for flashing. Diagnostic data for dashboards can also be routed, allowing OpenSide to access controllers to which the OpenSide client PC is not directly connected. In another video, we will go specifically into the creation and use of dashboards. Here, we will just extend an existing example to demonstrate the routing functionality for dashboards. STW software packages include examples of OpenSide that, together with a matching application on the controller, provide dashboards, for example, to display specific data. So I open the sample project that comes with the software for the ESX 3CS controller. I have stored the software package on the hard disk and now navigate to the OpenSide project. In this project, an ESX 3CS can be seen. In system commissioning, we see a view where the OpenSide client PC is directly connected to the controller via the CAN bus. Via this connection, we could use, for example, this dashboard, where different measured values can be displayed and outputs can be set. For example, this analog input IACV1 with which analog voltages can be measured. And this slider with which the output sensors apply can be set to values between 5 and 12 volts. In our experimental setup I have connected this output for the sensor supply with the input IACV1 in hardware so that I can measure the set output voltage with the input on the dashboard. To demonstrate the routing, however, we now do not want to access the ESX3CS directly from the OpenSide client PC via the CAN bus to operate the dashboard, but via Ethernet and another controller. Therefore, I extend the example project with an ESX4CS GW whose CAN bus 1 is connected to the already existing CAN bus 2 of the example and the Ethernet interface 
with an internet bus so that the configuration corresponds to our experimental setup from before. In this video, we skip the steps necessary to adapt the parameters from the example to our real experimental setup, such as node IDs, CAN bus speeds, IP addresses, etc., as well as flashing the ESX3CS with the application matching the dashboard. We have already shown these steps in principle at the beginning of the tutorial. We adjust our view. The ESX4CSGW shall be part of this view and we now connect our OpenSide client PC to the Ethernet. The communication of OpenSide takes place over Ethernet routed through the ESX4CSGW and further over the CAN bus to the ESX3CS. We go online with the dashboards. We can already see from the displays for CPU temperature and supply voltage that the measured values are transferred. Also, the sensor supply output can be set via the dashboard and the measured value for this voltage is transmitted. All communication necessary for this between PC and ESX3CS runs on the route through the ESX4CS GW. I hope to have brought you a little closer to the topic of routing. We summarize. Routing can be used in the system of controllers to access a controller that is not directly connected to the OpenSide client PC. This works alone via the CAN interfaces or from the Ethernet to the CAN interface. It can be used during system update or for data transfer to the dashboards. In the series of OpenSide videos, other videos appear on this channel that deal with the details of individual features. I wish you every success using OpenSide.